Hey everyone, I'm back, and today we're going to be talking about Melancholia. And this movie is directed by Lars von Trier, and it came out in 2011, starring Kirsten Dunst. And I've never seen this movie before. I've never seen the Lars von Trier movie before. I've heard he has uh, some uh, really great movies from some people, like Antichrist and Dancer in the Dark. Uh, those are supposedly, like, really great movies that I should probably check out. And... Uh, he also has some less than great movies, apparently, and I knew nothing about this one in particular, and I decided to take a gamble just to see what it was like. And while I can say this, I don't think this movie was a complete waste of time. There were things that I liked about it, but all in all, I have some mixed feelings about it. There are things that I love about it, for sure. Like, the look of the movie is really great. There's some really memorable shots in this movie, and I like the characters a lot, and I especially like the first half, and all the characters in the first half, and it's basically just a wedding, and everything's going really well for the longest time, and things slowly start to fall apart. All of that I was really enjoying, and I like the music for the movie, and I liked the usage of the classical music. I forget uh, what, which piece, uh, but my one criticism with the music would be that I do think it's overused, like they use it over five times uh, throughout the entire film, and I was just like, stop using it uh, this many times, like three is good enough, but more than five, really? But going back to positives, I do think that uh, this movie does communicate the emotions that it's trying to. Like, you do understand uh, what these characters are feeling and their mindset. And especially if you, like, actually finish the movie and then you uh, think back uh, earlier in the film uh, how things played out, but no, understanding the mindset some of these characters are in, like, it makes it better, I think. And I imagine that if I were to rewatch this movie, I would get a bit more out of it. Like, at the very least, tiny things that I didn't get out of this viewing. Like, it might get a little bit better. And that's something that I can say positive about this movie. But unfortunately, <laughs> as much as I like these things, and I do like the first half a lot, the second half, just to start off, it kind of turns into a different movie. <laughs> Like, I thought it was a complete tonal shift and was not really what I expected it to be. Like, the first 10 minutes kind of spoils the ending for this movie. <laughs> and I don't even know why they're there. Like, you could have just removed that and you wouldn't lose anything. As nice as it looked. It looked beautiful, but also unnecessary. But going back to the second half of the movie... What I really was missing in that second half uh, was, like, something to really connect with. And the things that uh, worked uh, best for me in the first half of the movie, I just felt uh, weren't in the second half as much. And I get it. Uh, characters are not uh, feeling too well. Like, it's kind of a depressing time for a lot of these characters because of what they went through. But at the same time, like, the story just turns into something completely different and I get it it was kind of setting all this stuff up but what was really gravitating me to this story of the film was when it was not really about the plot of the movie like I really loved the character conversations and I think the dialogue is very well written and like when it's characters talking that's when it works for me but in the second half, you just don't get that as much. And it does get to kind of repetitive after a while, which was kind of disappointing for me. Like, this movie easily could have been, like, half an hour shorter because I wasn't really getting much out of the experience in the second half. And I wasn't a huge fan of the slower pacing. Keep that in mind while watching this movie. This movie is not fast-paced at all. It really takes its time. It feels like it's 2 hours and 15 minutes. In the first half, it worked for me. Second half, not so much. And there were some uh, character decisions that uh, made me go, what? And it just kind of felt a bit odd. But 
most of the movie, I thought it was pretty well done, and I didn't have much of an issue there. And overall, I would say I liked the movie enough to give it a positive rating. Keep in mind, this is not a movie for everyone. It's uh, not a film that brings out happy emotions out of you, despite a wedding going on. <laughs> like, it's it's not a fun experience. Like, it's supposed to be kind of depressing in ways. But overall, I did like it, and I think I'll see it again at some point, just to see if it gets better. Because it is a film that left me thinking about it. And I think that's something that I wanted to do. So I would recommend it. It's good. The acting was really good in it. I know I didn't uh, say much about that, but uh, Kirsten Dunst uh, was really good in it. And everyone else uh, did a good job. Like, no one stood out as bad, in my opinion. And with all that being said, I'm going to give Melancholia, if I pronounced that correctly, a 6 out of 10. Thank you for watching my videos. As always, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below you thought of uh, Melancholia and my social media links. They will all be in the description, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Bully Nation, and I'll see when I get my next review up, and that is going to be for Dream Scenario. So look forward to that, but until I get that up, thank you for watching, and have a great day.